to talk about how to play scales even in a fast tempo. When I'm examining students for A, B, R, S, M and A, M, B, S, M, the major issues that they have are unevenness and shallow touch. So I'd like to talk about how you can practice to be able to play scales even with the clarity at a fast tempo. But try to understand the fingerings. So each octave, you have to pass fingers or cross fingers only one time on the transition. And so the notes you play until you pass or cross fingers will be in group A. And then the rest of the notes are in group B. So you practice group A and B separately, and then you smooth them out to be able to speed up. All right, so now each octave you divide into uh, two groups, group A and B. So the notes you play until you pass your thumb are in group A, and the rest of them are group B. So one, two, three, and then this is where your thumb tucks in. That is group A. And then F, G, A, B, one, two, three, four, are in group B. So one, two, three, group A. One, two, three, four, group B. So you practice separately, each group separately, until you learn the fingerings, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, yes, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So practice by groupings will help you to learn fingerings readily. So one, two, three, multiple times. And the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Try to understand the fingerings instead of just memorizing it because the students will always get very stressed. Without understanding the fingering, they're just trying to memorize it, right? Remember that you play with the legato fingerings on the transitions, the thumb tucks in, one, two, three, four. And then remember, you pass cross fingers only one time within an octave. So that will help you understand why you're using those fingerings. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. What happens if you pass your thumb after two? One, two, one, two, three, four. Then you end up crossing fingers, passing fingers again, again, right? So it's not good fingerings. So uh, passing fingers, crossing fingers, you have to limit to only one time within an octave, right? So that way it will help you understand why you have to use these fingerings, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. You have to focus on finger independence. So when you play fast, it doesn't get shallow or muffy, but able to play clearly. So now, let's work on finger independence. So when you speed up, it doesn't get shallow. All right, so you have to be able to play with clarity and finger independence. So stretching fingers, stretching fingers to improve your finger independence so that when you speed up, it doesn't get shallow, but still be able to play with clarity. So if you feel like you're not able to play even, uh, this is the method that you can try. So you accentuate the note every three or four. So. Yeah. So you accentuate every three or four notes. Depends on the scales and the left hand. Now we'll try with the left hand. You accentuate every three or four notes. This method will instantly make your playing even as you gain more control of your fingers by accentuating regularly. So this is the method that you can try if you feel that you are not able to play even on the scales or any complex 
fast passage that you're working on. And then you get rid of all the accents and smooth them out. Yeah, so when you play, always prepare your fingers in ahead of time. So when you are pressing down with your thumb, finger three supposed to be already crossed over and prepare to play the next note. Alright, always prepare in ahead of time. Alright. Now we're going to talk about how you can apply wrist and all movement on transitions. But this movement is very subtle, so you have to stay tuned. You need to have a very subtle movement. One, two, three. So you feel like when you're going up with your right hand, you feel like um, you are drawing the bottom part of the eclipse. But it has to be very subtle, as I explained to you. Yes, the all movement. So you feel like you're drawing at the bottom part of the eclipse. Not, not straight. Okay, it will make your hand and fingers tense. So you feel like you're drawing the, the bottom part of the eclipse. But the movement has to be very subtle. So try to play eight notes within an octave in one single motion. Okay, not one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Now you're playing in two motions, it will slow you down, okay? So try to play each octave in one single motion. Now, all right, so left hand, you have to reverse it. So when you're going up, you join a top part of the eclipse. So you have to be very careful, make sure that it doesn't get dramatic or exaggerated, you know? Yes, right? But very subtle. You see? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Gradual progress and consistent practice will contribute more to fast and comfortable playing. Make sure you spend enough time doing slow practice and gradually speed up the tempo up to the tempo that you desire. That's how you're able to expedite the process of learning. Make sure you practice properly and be able to reach the goal that you desire. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel it costs zero dollar and it will help me a lot.